Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about wilting plants and why it happens in the heat wave. But first, I want to introduce you to and say hello to the wonderful 2021 heat wave that has suddenly decided to grasp Canada and give us temperatures that we're not meant to see at all. So <laughs> if you want to get rid of that heat wave, I heard a rumor from the YouTube gods that if you give this video a thumbs up and even if you tap that subscribe button, this heat wave will be sent on its way back to California or wherever it came from and leave us poor, poor Canadians alone so we can go back to our igloos and our cold lifestyle. But let's continue on with the video so as you guys know we are in a heat wave and many of you are probably suffering from some wilted plants which is why we are doing this surprise random video on a tuesday which i thought was an absolute emergency to get you guys through this unscathed with a garden that is still intact don't do anything drastic don't panic we're gonna go through the science of why this wilting action happens, how we can mitigate it, all based in science. So let's jump right into it. So you can see here behind me, I have some Brussels sprouts, I have some kale, just cold climate crops that generally do not do well in any sort of heat wave. And therefore, by mid-afternoon, they're starting to look a little wilted, but by morning, they suddenly perk up again. So let's go into the science of why this is happening and how we can prevent it based on those scientific facts. So when a plant wilts, what generally is going on there is we are losing something called turgor pressure, meaning water pressure. So if we break this down a little bit, when we end up with heat, especially with a cold climate crop that is not suited for high heat we end up with higher rates of evaporation when we end up with more evaporation from the stomata we end up with less pressure in the leaves which ends up resulting in that wilting look that was what we're seeing behind me so as our temperature climbs our water pressure in our leaves go down because evaporation is removing all the water through the stomata and the stomata are very simply kind of like a sweat gland of the plant that allows that plant to cool off. So if a plant is too warm, based on its leaf style, its area that it's planted, the number, of the amount of wind, whatever the case is, what ends up happening is our water will be released to that stomata as a sweat and therefore we end up with the wilt. So you're probably thinking, well, if it's evaporating from the plant's leaf, out of the stomata, why doesn't the plant just pick up more water, which in some cases will work. So for example, if we water in the morning, we may be able to get a little bit of a head start or a little bit of a prevention from this wilting action that we're seeing. However, this may not always work, especially when it comes to cold climate crops. So here's an example of a not so cold climate crop. Obviously it is an aloe vera plant, but we still have lots of turgor pressure despite the fact that it is very warm outside. And this is because it is a C4 plant, which we discussed in our snake plant video. When we look at this plant, it has less stomata on it, meaning it has less rate of evaporation despite the heat outdoors, meaning it's less likely to sweat and therefore lose that water. Another example of this is, well, let's just go head over to it. Another really great example of this is our lovely tomato plant, which again, hasn't lost our turgor pressure because when we're able to supply those roots with the water, despite the evaporation that may be happening to cool the plant in the heat of the day, we have the water in the bottom, which is then taken up by the roots because of the change in pressure. And therefore we end up with a relatively firm plant again, despite that heat. But what is going on with our cold climate crops and why are they wilting? Can we fix it? Let's jump back over there. We know plants have several mechanisms to deal with this. The first one being something like an aloe vera plant that has less stomata, meaning less ability to actually lose water through the stomata cells through evaporation. Now, the second method is to have an abundance of stomata cells that allow for sweating and allow for the cooling of the plant. But so long as the water's in the soil, that difference in pressure will mean the roots will attract more water 
take that water up into the plant and therefore we still end up with some turgor pressure and a plant that has not yet wilted so long as water is present. Now with these cold climate crops behind me, the situation is a little bit different. And this goes into the actual cellular structures of the plant. Now I'm not gonna get too technical here with you guys, but I am going to kind of touch into the nerdy part of the plant science of a cold climate crop such as these ones here. The first thing being all plants need to cool off regardless of what the heat is outdoors. It's 35 degrees Celsius. The water has to be evaporated from the system to allow for some heat exchange. So the plant is still going to respire and it's still going to sweat off that extra heat in the form of water. The issue with a cold climate crop, however, is that think of a garden hose that is under heat. In the morning, the garden hose is relatively stiff, but as the day goes on, our garden hose heats up and it can get a little bit more flexible, especially if it's in full sun and in high heat. The same thing is happening with our vascular structures in our cold climate crops. They're getting so warm, they're expanding so much despite the plant's best efforts to take up as much water as possible. It's not able to hit that equilibrium where water uptake is matching the rate of evaporation or respiration from the plant, therefore allowing that plant to perk up. So it's just essentially the plant not being able to keep up with the changes in pressure in a timely fashion. This isn't going to harm the plant so long as it's not over a prolonged period of time. And thankfully here in Canada, we don't have prolonged periods of extreme heat. It's usually only a week or two back on wood. However, there are some ways to counteract this and make this work to your benefit and protect these crops and try to keep your yields up despite the fact that they look like they're being lowered drastically. So the first thing is to take or relieve that heat. So this can be done through a shade cloth or moving the pot or the container indoors if that is the case. So if we can provide a shade cloth or in this case plant initially in a shady or semi partly shade area, we're better able to counteract this because we're able to remove that direct sun intensity and just general raising of that water temperature within the plant itself. The second thing is obviously to water. So same thing with the tomatoes, we need to make sure with our cabbage, our Brussels sprouts, our kale, that we keep the water in the soil so that event that high levels of water is being released through the stomata, we still have that soil water available for that plant to uptake and try as best as it can to offset those pressures despite the fact that those vascular systems are really stretched out because of the heat. So that is our step two is ensuring that we water. A step three is to actually water the foliage itself. And this can be done with any plant across the board, tomatoes, succulents, you name it. And before you scream bloody murder because you think I'm burning the plant leaves, let me tell you the idea of water actually burning plant leaves is fake. It's a complete myth and we busted that myth actually in a video from I believe last year so don't worry about that too much however adding that moisture to that plant leaf is actually going to decrease the rate of evaporation or exchange of gases and water between the plant and the outdoor systems so you're probably thinking well why does this happen and we covered this in our Calathea slash Maranta video where we're talking about ambient moisture if we're able to bring up that ambient moisture whether it be from foliage on the actual plant leaves or just the ambient moisture around by watering the soil we end up with lower rates of evaporation and our stomatas aren't just leaking water out like madmen so a little bit of water in the leaves is going to cure what ails you the nice thing about getting water in the leaves when it's this hot out and there's this much intense sun is that Kind of works to our benefit because it will evaporate that water so quickly that it won't stick around long enough to engage with bacterial fungal any sort of infection you will be made in the shade so to put this into perspective i actually just watered those tomato plants before starting filming this video here and we just went to go look at those tomato plant leaves and they're already dry that is how hot and how intense the sun is this week so again 
you don't have to worry about it too much. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and that it's going to help you beat the heat just a little bit with your plants. Remember, some plants are made for this heat and this sunshine and they will do fine so long as they are watered. Other plants, if you notice they're wilting, it may be time to either provide them some shade, make sure you're watering that soil to keep that turgor pressure up nice and high because we need to balance out our pressures. And thirdly, consider watering those leaves, especially if it's in direct full blown sun, because it's going to work to the plant's benefit to just kind of level out or reduce the speed of evaporation. And because we have the heat and the sun, we won't end up with any sort of crazy infections on our actual plant leaves. But all in all, your plants will survive this, I promise you, so long as you keep up with that watering, which may be daily or twice daily, depending on where you are. BC, oh my goodness, we're praying for you down here in Saskatchewan because 45 degrees Celsius is nuts. And some of you on Instagram have already messaged me about that. Absolutely wild. Which, by the way, fun fact, you actually stole our record here in Saskatchewan that was placed in like 1935 or something like that. BC took the cake yesterday on June 28th, 7th, 7th, you, you beat the Canadian record. So congratulations, you can have it. Do not give it back. We do not want it. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know down in the comments below how you counteract the heat and if your brassica plants or your cold climate crops are wilting and what your hot climate crops are doing because I'm sure your peppers, tomatoes, and everything else are just popping off having a great time. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.